Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. I wasn't planning on doing any shooting today, but it just turned out to be such a gorgeous mid-February day here in the high country that I just couldn't stand it. So I threw some stuff together and, and did a little four-wheeling to get up here and uh, getting kind of set up here to, to do a kind of a part two of our barrel length versus velocity episode. Now, for those of you who didn't see that, we did some we used 4440 as our caliber because I had a wide variety of different barrel lengths to choose from um, and took shots with everything from a four and three quarter inch revolver to a 30 inch 1873. Now, because we had a revolver in the mix and some older 73s, I only used some light, light uh, cowboy action loads there. And we talked a little bit about how the results might be a little different with a hotter load or with uh, um, a higher powered cartridge, uh, rifle cartridge. So today I brought some 1894s up. Now we don't have as near the variety of barrel lengths, but we've got everything from 16 to 26 inches. So maybe we'll get an idea from that. And when we when we did that last episode, I, I even mentioned that that if there was some interest in it, maybe we'd come back with a um, a higher powered cartridge and try it out. And I was a little bit surprised at the amount of say what we say chin scratching and hand wringing um, conjecture about how things would be a little different if, if we had a, um, maybe a hotter load or, or a more powerful cartridge. So today's is kind of a, a uh, extension of that one. And if this one is, is, uh, shows up anything interesting, maybe next time we'll bring out something a little bit different too. I was thinking on the way up here about a couple of really nice deluxe 95s that I hadn't shot yet that uh, maybe we'll try this in 3040 Craig next time. So stick around, I'll get uh, these rifles ready to go and, and uh, get all set up and we'll come back and see how she goes. So here's today's lineup. We start off with a 1894 in, uh, of course all these are in 3030 or 30 WCF. Uh, this first one's a 16 inch, what most people will call a trapper. I think uh, Winchester actually called him a baby carbine. Next up we've got a 20 inch standard saddle ring carbine. And there on the top, there's a 26-inch rifle. Um, that particular one is a, is a real nice half-octagon, um, close-coupled set trigger and, and uh, pistol grip gun. Really a joy to shoot. So stick around, we'll uh, see how these three perform. Okay, let's get started with this 16-inch trapper here. Today we're just shooting some, some uh, factory Federal ammunition. Uh, this 150 grain, they've got it listed at 2390 feet per second so I guess we'll see how close we come to to uh, Federal's listed velocity here okay let's give this a try twenty one thirty seven Knocked my target over on the first shot, so not really a big issue because we're not uh, worrying too too much about where we're hitting on the target. So I'll just shoot at that old fence post I had the target laid on. Okay, number two. 2142. Boy, that's consistent. And one more. And 2150. Well, that's real consistent. Now I have to tell on myself about this gun. This uh, this is one I, I picked up in the very early days of my collecting Winchesters. Really excited about it at the time. This one is uh, U.S. marked, has the flaming bomb ordnance mark, and on the side of the barrel it says U.S. Border Patrol. Now. Boy, howdy, was I excited to get this gun, and I got it really reasonably priced. Um, the only problem is, is I've, I've gotten a little more knowledgeable about collecting. Uh, I've found that it's about as phony as a $3 bill. So, you know, let it be a lesson to you for if you're getting into collecting. If you really don't know what you're looking at, make sure and ask somebody who does. And a great place to ask that question is on the Winchester Arms Collectors Association forum. Uh, just send in a picture and ask about it. If I'd done that with this one, um, 
I'd have, I'd have walked away in a hurry. And if, like in this case, it was something, had to act on it right now because, uh, you know, it wasn't going to be there very long. And, well, if, it, if it, in that kind of a big hurry that you can't ask a, a knowledgeable collector about it, then walk away. So, luckily, I didn't really pay a huge amount for this. And it, it's, uh, it's a fun little shooter, even if it isn't really much of a collector. One that's not, uh, a guy's not afraid to just take out and put in the pickup and use it like it was, like these uh, little short barrel ones were intended for. Okay, so let's go to this uh, 20 inch saddle ring carbine. So we averaged about 2140 on that, that uh, trapper. Let's see if we pick up anything with another four inches of barrel length. 2353. Okay, so we did a couple hundred feet per second. Twenty three seventeen and one more. So let's see what happens with this uh, full length 26 inch rifle. Twenty three sixty four. That's a little bit higher than the than the saddle ring carbine but not really significant let's see what happens these last couple of shots 2357 okay and one more now I'm only taking three shots just um, that that gives us enough to, to see the trend and uh, not bore you to death sitting here just watching me shoot off of a lead sled. Twenty-three forty-three. So what we found with those Model 94s and 3030 is that we got a fairly decent uh, increase in velocity between 16 and 20 inches, about 180 feet per second. And then not much after that, be between 20 and 26 inches, we only got about 30 feet per second uh, more velocity. So there really doesn't look like there's a whole lot of advantage after around just over 20 inches. Now, if you compare that to um, the same test we did with a 4440 with the light cowboy action loads, uh, we got a little bit of an increase between the, our 14 inch trapper and our 20 inch carbine and then nothing after that. So we did see a little more of a, a increase with a higher velocity load. Now the 4440 with the cowboy loads was only a thousand feet per second and those 3030 were about uh, 2300 plus. So it was a significant difference in velocities to change a little bit in uh, velocity and barrel length or velocity in relation to barrel length. So I couldn't stand it. I, I talked earlier about going and getting a couple of 1895s and 3040 Craig to try those. And this, it's a, a little more powerful cartridge than the, than the 3030. So I went and picked up these two beautiful deluxe 1895s. One of them's a 22 inch short rifle. One's a standard uh, 28 inch rifle. So we'll see if there's maybe any difference between 22 and 28 inches in that same or similar velocity range to the 3030. If we can't draw any conclusions from these 95s, at least it's a whole lot of fun to come out here on a bright sunny day and shoot some deluxe Winchesters, huh? So let's just take a minute and take a closer look at these two before we get over there and get to shooting them. Uh, the one on the bottom, of course, is a, is a second model deluxe. Um, short rifle, 22 inch barrel, factory sling eyes. Very high condition gun, just just beautiful wood on it. Um, both of them, of course, have the climb and alignment or Model 21 uh, receiver sights. The top one, of course, a, a factory deluxe pistol grip shotgun butt. Um, 
beautiful beautiful wood has has a little more wear and tear on it but uh, looks like it's been pretty well taken care of both of them have great bores these uh, pistol grips are pretty unusual on 95s they were only offered on the on the first model flat sides like this and only about 300 of them were made according to uh, Cassab and Dunbar's wonderful book on 1895s they did make one second model with a with a uh, pistol grip uh, but that's a story for another episode maybe we'll look at that someday um, but stick around um, I'm really looking forward to putting a few rounds through these beauties okay so let's get started with this uh, beautiful short rifle Twenty four, twenty four. Got the geese flying off the pond anyway. good spread there on those so we're averaging right about 2400 with the first two twenty four fifty two wow so about twenty four twenty five for an average now this gun is just amazing you probably noticed the high condition of it this gun's been shot very little this thing is so tight the action on it um, the the lifters barely got any kind of marks on it I don't think it's hardly been shot I got this gun from a uh, retired naval officer who was in his 80s and he said he's, his father bought it brand new and barely ever used it he loved the gun and he he couldn't hardly bring himself to take it hunting so um, it's just I thank my lucky stars I was able to to come up with that gun. Okay, let's try this uh, this flat side. The fellow I bought this from is a really really good friend, and he's already shot it and he gave me the target from when he test fired it, so I know it's a good shooter. Now we're just going to see if there's a difference in velocity from that 22 inch. 24-23, so it's not looking like it. In fact, that's within one foot per second of the first shot with the 22 inch. Twenty-four nineteen. We're getting consistent with this one. The last one sure wasn't. Okay, and one more round. 24-33. So really, statistically, no difference between the 22-inch and the 28-inch. And, you know, going in, we kind of talked about that. I, I really didn't expect to see much of a difference. I, I kind of wondered if there wouldn't be some difference, but uh, it's just not there. So what we saw with this Remington factory ammo and 180 grain bullets was that we didn't pick up any velocity between 22 and 28 inches. In fact, I think there was only about eight feet per second difference between the two. So I feel pretty safe in saying that with, with the 3030 and the 3040 with these velocities, um, we're not gonna make gains appreciably after about 22 inches. Now that doesn't mean that um, some completely different cartridge say some of these modern cartridges with, with small bullets and 4,000 feet per second wouldn't show something completely different but for these old guns I think that's that's about where we where we stand at about 22 inches we, we stopped making gains and it, it may very well be that with really long barrels that we're actually losing some uh, velocity as we're trying to push that bullet way out of a long barrel gun so 
one of the things that, that uh, I kind of want to let you guys in on, if you follow the channel, things are going to change up a little bit now. Out of necessity, I need to be doing some fabricating down in the shop, I need to be setting up my gunsmithing program. Um, so I'm going to be building some bluing tanks and um, probably a, a heat treat oven and a Cerakote and powder coat oven, you know, things of that nature. Um, got a new lathe on the way, got to get set up and broke in. So while we're still going to bring out some really fun, interesting guns to shoot when on nice sunny days like this, we're going to be doing a lot more kind of shop work. And if you're interested in some of that stuff, we'll keep an eye out for that as well. And, and I promise we'll, we'll be doing some shooting in between some of the fabricating projects. So keep, keep an eye out and until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.